Oh, oh. shit! Congratulations, Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work i hope everybody's having a great day it is taco tuesday and i hope all your taco dreams come true uh, i'm here at my fan cave at the red brick house and we're dealing with drama and oh my god i have to actually thank espn because i hadn't thought about this um this angle at all and we're going to get to this angle about the drama that's going on in dallas right now um Here's an interesting take. There's a lot of people out there that say, you know, Dak Prescott and his contract is the problem that we need to move on from Dak. You know, uh, the Cowboys have stated that, you know, we're, we're going to get an extension done for Dak Prescott. You know, Dak Prescott, I think, has the second highest cap number uh, in the NFL at $59 million. And the thing that's funny is, uh, you know, again, I, I'm not trying to... Um, belittle anybody's knowledge but the way the salary cap is is it's like funny money it's how you basically distribute the money and so on the reality is is you have quarterbacks that's average contract is 55 million Dak Prescott's contract is averaging 40 million the question is is how do you spread out that money well the Cowboys chose to restructure his contract several different times so the first year was a 17 million the next year was a 19 million and this past year was 26 you can do those things the only problem with that is is at some point the number is going to balloon up and if it's not playing if the person's not playing you're going to end up getting a big dead hit like the eagles did with carson wentz and this is the ticking time bomb that could be with Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts' numbers the first couple of years are below $10 million on his extension. That money is looking and planning on him being their quarterback for five, six, seven years. If it ends up being that Jalen Hurts is the problem and they have to get rid of him, they're going to take a massive cap hit um, there. So the Cowboys, and one of the things that I, I didn't understand how it worked or how it was going to work because if we look at Dak Prescott's current contract and let me pull it up actually um, sorry broke ass media this is where we write the script as we're doing the script um, let me pull it on over here so we can see it <clears throat> okay all right pop it up on the screen Dak Prescott age 30 free agency um, and voiding at 2025 25 is a voidable year now this is where you know there's so many different avenues and everything else you've got to have a degree from MIT to understand what's going on with it now, if we actually look over here, his actual um, salary is $29 million. The bonus money, which is where you go ahead and you say, okay, you know, here's your signing bonus and um, so on. That money is divided up over the life of the contract. Okay. So what happens is if the Cowboys decide, um, they, they basically have the voidable years on the contract where they can get out of it. What they can do, though, is they can use that as a salary dump. They can put money in there. Now, per uh, Michael Gilkin, this was where I didn't understand how it would work. Because basically, after the end of next season, you can walk away without owing Dak Prescott any more money on the cap. If you choose and don't touch the contract. Ideally, you don't want that $59 million cap number to be on your books for this year. The easiest way to do something like that is, if you believe 
that Dak is going to be your quarterback is you go ahead and get an extension and extend it out as long as possible and reduce that $59 million down into, you know, say $20 million. In which case, then you've got about $39, $40 million to play with on re-signing, uh, you know, your CeeDee Lamb, your Micah Parsons, and so on, and maybe making some moves in free agency. Currently, the Cowboys are $18 million over the cap. And come the beginning of the league year, somewhere around March 15th, we will need to be under that cap number. So it behooves them to get Dak Prescott's deal done and get you your money right there or to go ahead and make some of the other moves. If you're going to go ahead and um, release some guys like, say, Tyron Smith and all that to get those guys cut or restructuring done before then. So hopefully you have not only you're under the cap, you have some money that you will actually use to try and get some other players. So here's another option, and I I was wondering about this, is restructuring his contract because you do have the voidable years, and Michael Gakin um, actually put it out here. So let me read exactly what he's saying as far as what they could do to basically save about $20 million on the cap this year. Now understand, you are saving that $20 million on this year's cap, but that's the same thing as what you've been doing all these other years to get the cap number down. You still have to pay that money. If you say, I'm going to have just one more year, Dak Prescott, we're going to restructure it, you will be paying that money years to come. The four-year, $160 million contract Prescott signed in 2021 contains language that is player-friendly. While Prescott <clears throat> may have the Cowboys star in the jar and their ability to trade him, no trade costs, franchise tag him, can't tag or transition tag him, one team-friendly position uh, carries relevance in the months ahead. His contract is not a standard four-year deal. Two voidable years were attached in the back end in 25 and 26. These dummy years were added to allow the Cowboys more financial flexibility when managing the salary cap. They did and they did and still can. That's where they've already restructured his contract several times, which is why the number is at 59. Dallas restructured Prescott's contract before 22 and 23 season. Each time they executed what is called an automatic conversion, uh, which is when the team converts a portion of the player's salary into a signing bonus while the salary caps against the team cap in the same year the salary is earned. Signing bonus is spread across the contract life of up to five years. The voided years in 25 and 26 allow the Cowboys to spread the bonus more thinly in effect, pushing more cap dollars in the future. And again, this is not saving. When a, a player restructures a contract, it's not giving money back like some people think. Prescott is owed $29 million salary for this year, as we pointed out. Hypothetically, the Cowboys have the sole discretion to reduce that salary as low as $1.21 million. The $27.79 million reduction would be paid to Prescott as a bonus and become evenly descriptive across 24, 25, and 26 years. So you're going to divide that 27 um, by 9. At 59, Prescott is now slated to have the second highest cap hit of any player in 24, trailing only uh, Deshaun Watson, 63. If the Cowboys convert the maximum amount Prescott's salary to sign a bonus, Prescott's new number would be $40.93 million the seventh highest. Dallas can create $18.53 million in cap space through this automatic conversion. So, they can do this and, you know, nothing changes on the contract. You still get out of the contract um, if you want to next year, but that means you will be taking that money, that $18 million, over the next two years beyond. So, that is an option if you don't want, you know, if Dak ends up playing hardball and says, I want a three-year deal that's, you know, $180 million and, and so on and doesn't allow any flexibility, the Cowboys could go ahead and exercise this conversion and um, uh, end up saving, you know, say $20 million or excuse me, $18 million and be able to at least function the team it's not ideal you want to get every penny out of this thing as you can because we do have 16 free agents 16 
expiring contracts. And I know people will say there's a bunch of those guys that should go. And, you know, I'm going to agree with you, you know, that there's guys on there that you're not going to bring back. But there's still roster spots that you're going to have to fill, whether it's with them or somebody else and potentially somebody who's better. That's going to cost you money and you need that money. Now, this situation where we are right now, I want to say that we had 28 um, expiring contracts last year. 28. So we're not in as bad a hole as we were. Now, the problem for the Cowboys is, is you're looking, you, you have a solution for Dak Prescott's contract that can save you money with his extension if you go that route. C.D. Lamb is a $17 million hit, and you could end up saving some money by getting his deal done in the short term. Micah Parsons' deal will cost you more money to do. And this is an interesting take that we got from ESPN when they're talking about the drama in Dallas. Is this drama created to be a negotiation point? Because the Cowboys, you know, if... (laughs) When your woman's about to leave you and you love your woman and don't want to leave, you say, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, don't go. I'll do anything. Just don't go. When you start hearing CD, you know, I wish my baby would get out. When you hear Micah Parsons' brother saying, you know, um, screw the Cowboys and so on. And Tad Prescott saying, I'd like to see him out of Dallas. Is this putting pressure on the Cowboys on getting these deals and showing them the love? Let's go to Dallas drama. Wait till you hear what's going on in Dallas. Here we go. It starts with C.D. Lamb, his mother posting on Facebook that she wished her son would be traded, adding, quote, Dak isn't it and that the Cowboys need to get rid of him. Dak's brother, Tad, who's a friend of the show, then chimed in, taking to X over the weekend, posting, Cowboys fans who continue to DM me, trust me, if I could get Dak to leave Dallas, I would. I would. Meanwhile, Micah Parsons' brother, Terrence, got into the act, <laughs> saying Dak needs to take a team-friendly deal. He posted on X that Dak should take, quote, take $40 million or pack your bags, which led Micah oh, on oh, Sunday God. to respond, <laughs> Posting any comments made by Tara Parsons Jr. or his and his alone. <laughs> As you know, if I have something to say, I'm not afraid Interesting to say Interesting point. I love my team, my brothers on my team in the city of Dallas, and I'm more committed than ever to bring a championship to the greatest fan base on earth. <laughs> Outside of all that, not much going on really in Dallas. So what the actual oh. heck is this? <laughs> Jeff, what? This is... This is off season full of entertainment is what this is right here. This is a thing of beauty. We're not two weeks outside the season after you've won and done it as the two seed, and we already got hiding in house. There's nothing better. And I'm not sure. I kind of thought about this, and I was like, is this negotiation tactics? Like, are, we like, are they trying to push a hey, that could leave? My family wants me to leave, but I'm not going to leave. You better give me more money or CD Lamb. Hey, I, if my mom wants me to go, I might leave. Got to get more money from you, Jerry. I'm not sure what it is, but I do love the hostility because all it does is give me more to talk about. But there you go. This, from winning football games, it's hard enough when everything's aligned. When you got this mess going on. Oh, maybe maybe there's a reason McCarthy was only one. Yeah, maybe people were like, uh, nope, I'm out. This, this is a negotiation tactic. Terrence Parsons is giving Dak his number. <laughs> like, he's, he's in Dak's pocket there. Like, like, what you, yeah, no, I mean, this is, I mean, look, they're going to, the social media is, is ridiculous and, and, and awful and should go away. But what the Cowboys are telling you, uh, they're going to tell you what they think by who gets extensions. Yes. Right? Dak Prescott is up for an extension. Micah Parsons is up for an extension. C.D. Lamb is up for an extension. Uh, of those three, I would say I'm most confident that C.D. Lamb gets one. Yeah. And then probably Dak Prescott after that. But you don't have to give Ooh. out extensions. Can I, can I just ask a question? Ooh. Is it Of those three, is it Micah Parsons the best player? I mean, I, I get that C.D. Lamb is great. And I get that Dak Prescott was a borderline MVP this year. You, Micah Parsons is like the one of one guy, is what you guys agree. always You could probably me. make a case that CeeDee Lamb had a better year than Micah. I don't want Micah on my case about this. I'm just saying, like, CeeDee was Micah amazing. Terrence, Terrence, right. Terrence whoever. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think. Him Terrence. Let me ask you a serious question. 
like you guys, you played it, you lived it. Forgetting the GM part, forgetting mm -hmm. the coach part. You guys were players. You're in the locker. Room. Like now, all of a sudden, your mom is saying stuff about me, and your uh, yeah. brother is. Like, That's how does that work out? It, it doesn't I mean, usually. It doesn't yeah. usually work out. It usually doesn't end well. Look, I, I've said this a hundred times, and this is the God's honest truth. Listen, man, you can have an ego. We all have them. That's right. We all feel that we're the baddest dudes out there. We all feel that we're the best sport, whatever it is. When people start exercising agendas Agenda. like this, That's what exactly you're doing right. now, you're just sowing discourse. You are sowing divide. And I'm telling you, Micah can issue all the releases that he wants now about loving his teammates. Players are human. They go yeah. home and they talk to their family. You're planting the seeds of what That's your right. family is saying based off of maybe some of the conversations you're having with them. That's right. Okay, they're not just coming up with it on their own. They aren't just going out there on their own and just saying stuff. They've heard this somewhere before. You know, Micah's family's heard this somewhere before. CD's family, they've heard, they've heard this kind of talk somewhere. Yeah. And look, sometimes if I was talking to like, you know, one of my family members about how I felt about a teammate. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so what this is, is I, I mean, I think this I think is a little bit of, win of a window into I think that how things aren't so, so rosy down there. As much as fans care, your family cares even more. And whether mm -hmm. they've heard this from the players or not, this could just be their, their reaction. Because I think that those tweets or comments are similar to what you will hear fans say after yep. the game. That's but exactly the is, what it is. You guys aren't fans. You have the same last name right. or you're the mother or you have something that means that your words carry a little weight. And I'm not going to sit up here and criticize people's family, but I know I would hate that because yeah. you're not helping. Yeah. Not uh, one of those tweets or Facebook posts right. helped mm -hmm. anybody on their team. Nope. It's yeah. not going to nope. make Dak take a team friendly deal. That's it's right. not going to make mm -hmm. Dak play better. It's not going to make Micah's day in training camp any more fun having to do it. You're making everything and worse. You, and you know what? Yeah. If you want to call, if you want to call uh, your, uh, your, your family member who's on the team and talk trash about the players, by all means, we all talk trash about our coworkers every now and then. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> but, but don't do it on TV. Yeah. Right. Dom, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you would be looking at your teammate differently, whether Absolutely. or not, you'd be sitting there going, wait a second Problem, now, right? wait a second, your, your brother said what? Yeah. yeah. Whether he, uh, and, and, and you could tell me a hundred, you could tell me a hundred times, hey dude, it was him, it wasn't yeah. me. Like, I don't believe that. But let's say I don't this. believe My, of all of all that's happened, Micah handled it the way it should have been handled. Right away, True. jump on. This is not True. my feelings. Whatever people say, they, they're grown. They can say whatever they want to there say. There you go. Because you, we all know this. We all got to come back in that locker room together. And there right. better be Wait. some hugs. There better be some because here's the deal. CD Lamb, you're gonna have some drops. You don't want that ball not coming. Right. But Jack, bro, you're gonna have some bad throws. Micah, you're gonna get stoned some. Everybody understands that all of us are better together than we are separate. Amen. We winning games while those dudes walk out the door. And that's what we're all here. We're all better together. Those guys need to get on that and say, hey, Jeff, I squash. promise you, I promise you, I would look at you different. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Even if you did come up, hey, dog, we're good, dude. We're good. It wasn't me. But I'd still be looking at you like, yeah. The comments from CD's mother is, like, a little bit more concerning to me because the way that game played out where we were like, man, CD sure is missing. It seems like there's some mis There's some get mm -hmm. there. That's and, the one. And then to the carry it on, that's the only one that feels yeah. a little bit different to yeah. me. But I also think that you said that Micah handled it perfectly. I'm not sure that there is a perfect way to handle it because the one thing that – he needed to say was some strong support behind Dak Prescott. He said, "He said I love all my teammates." <laughs> which, yeah, I love which everybody. Kind of, which, he, he, and no, he, no, no. And okay, him. maybe it's unfair me parse yeah. the words, but they put this on the table. Yeah, I didn't. I'm, I'm not the one who put. And, it you, know and you know what? And you know what? And you know what? Internally, yeah. you'd feel the same way. I right? If you're, if you're Dak right now, you'd be my like, "My name was that's in right. the comment before. Put my name in the next one." That's Archie right. Manning came after us one time after a game. A play, I don't remember what it was. Playoff game. Or oh, I do remember that. Yeah, right. And I still love Arch, man. Like we still text, like. Listen, man, like at the, at the end of the day, hmm. I didn't look at Peyton any differently. I understood we got to go win together. This is what this thing looks like. Everybody's pissed off. Everybody's feelings are hurt. Everybody's upset. Everybody's trying to get paid. But wait. But, but at some point, I don't believe – I think what Micah did is the right thing. I don't think it is naming names. It is. You just go, hey, we're all going to be here together. We're all going to get there this thing right. We're going to put this thing back together, go win games. But That's this is different. So, so I'm trying to remember that. Sir. That was the game where, where Peyton afterwards said, I'm trying to be a good teammate, and we had trouble yeah, in I don't protection. Know. I don't remember which one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember what yeah. it was. I mean, and, we gave up and Archie or gave, like that. Yeah. gave some general criticism of yeah. the offensive line. I, I'm just looking at the actual post here. Uh-oh, uh, here we go. At, or, or this Bring is the Facebook skeletons out the closet. Posting there at C.D. Lamb's mother that, that, that C.D. should come to Houston, and she writes, um, 
I get it. I wish he would. CJ is great. And then in all capital, meaning CJ Stroud, all capital letters, Dak isn't it. That's right. not the same thing. I get Archie it. Manning didn't say Jeff Saturday stinks. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's I, yeah, very yeah, yeah. direct. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, that's too. not the same. But I'm just saying I, you, you deal with the stress of failure in the postseason and all those things. Everybody's feelings are still raw. I think we can hurt. all I think we can all agree that this it's just it not going to help. No, no. It it's not going to help. You are no you're what, not yeah. you're now trying to and you're, it's a great succeed point about, in spite of. critical of what we did, this which is, was this which is, was valid. This is a bit is tied to the Josh Allen conversation we were having before is like we can go through all of the Cowboys losses and find their playoff losses and find reasons to excuse Dak. But when you get to the end of the day, you lose them all and people, fans, and people who are elevated above fans, family members, and maybe even teammates who will not say mm-hmm. it, come down to this thing and say, Dak isn't it. And it's the same thing connecting yeah. these conversations. It's an unfair world go. that the quarterbacks live in, but it's the world that they live in. And Jeff, I don't care what you say. Maybe you're a better man than, than everyone else. But if somebody call your name, no, I know you, Jeff. I know you. <laughs> well, he didn't Somebody call, call your that's name directly that's and say, point. That's a Jeff point. Saturday yeah, ruined yeah. that game. That's, that's what he did. Yeah, that's that's Jeff Saturday. Point. Point. It don't matter where that's 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 man that's that's anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff that's Saturday going to put his hands on you. No, no, that's, that's Jeff Saturday I know. I, yeah. and he didn't do that. All right, we're going to leave it right there. But that brings up an interesting point here that you could look at that and say, you know, maybe it helps negotiations. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. All I know is it's a mess right now, and we are feeling like a rudderless ship. And Jerry Jones, it all starts with you, bro. We got to figure out what's going to go on with Dan Quinn if he's coming back or not coming back. Excuse me, or if we uh, where we go from here. All right, good people. I will catch you a little bit later. Peace out. <laughs>